Welcome to the Salon Owners Collective podcast. Each week on the podcast, you'll hear stories and tactics from experts and influencers who will provide you with actionable steps to transform your business and your life. I'm your host, Larissa McClemon, and I help salon owners move from stress and overwhelm to lead a life of freedom and profit by implementing a strategic framework to grow and scale their business. So wherever you are in the world, I want to officially invite you to join me in this episode and make an important step in your journey towards more freedom and more profit. Like most salon owners, sometimes we dread social media marketing. Sometimes the thought of having to put something on Instagram or put ourselves out there sends us into an anxious hole of avoidance. It's just too hard. I understand, and I'm sure you're making an effort. However, it can feel like your posts don't generate much engagement, and the people who do engage aren't the ones that you're actually trying to attract into the salon. It's always your junior stylist or your overly enthusiastic Aunt Carol who comments lovely on every post, but actually set foot in the salon. So you think, what's the point? You're not a wordsmith. You feel like you're winging it in any case and don't have time for all of this. You know you need a strategy, but you just actually don't know where to start. So that's why I'm excited to bring you this three-part intensive with my incredible marketing coaches, Bell and Braley. Over the next three weeks, they're going to be talking about the four steps to building a marketing strategy unique to your salon so you can attract your dream clients and get them from social media to the salon chair. So let's start with part one, how to identify and attract the perfect clients for your salon. Let's take it away, Belle and Rayleigh. All right, so we're jumping into your dream client buying journey when it comes to your social media and marketing. So obviously social media is such a massive thing for salons these days, right? It needs to be a big part of your salon's overall marketing strategy to ensure that you're attracting the dream clients, the clients that you're wanting to attract into your salon business and increasing your revenue. So we're going to jump into the key elements that you need to create content that attracts your dream clients and turns them into followers and then into those paying clients that become the loyal clients that continues to return to your salon. We're going to chat through why these elements are so important for doing just that. So right now, when it comes to planning your socials, you might feel a little bit uncertain. You're not really sure what to post and you're not really sure what to write when it comes to putting your captions together. You're not a journalist, you're not a wordsmith. So there's a level of uncertainty when it comes to thinking about what content you'd like to create on your social media pages for your salon. And that brings out a lot of self-doubt, right? We get this, what everyone knows is that imposter syndrome, right? Where we're kind of looking over our shoulder, maybe seeing other salons have a lot of success and trying to copy what they're doing and not really understanding why is that not working for me. Maybe we're wanting to try something new, but we feel a little bit camera shy. I know a lot of sounds a little bit scared of showing their face, particularly when it comes to social media marketing. So that's something that can also bring a lot of self-doubt and fear when it comes to our content and social media. And it can make us feel a little bit silly. Maybe we feel a little bit embarrassed and we're worried about that judgment, right? That we get from family and friends and our clients that are coming into the salon. And then obviously there's time. So as a salon and business owner, we're so time poor and we've got this never ending to-do list when it comes to our business. So that time pressure and overthinking our content happens a lot and just feeling like it takes so much time to plan and do it. And we just have this feeling that we want to give up with it, right? We don't really care anymore because it's just so time consuming and so overwhelming for us. And we kind of feel like this rush and this pressure all the time when it comes to our social media marketing. So we think we're just going to wing it, right? So instead of just winging it, what we actually need is a strategy, a strategy that's unique to our own individual salon. So instead of copying other people, we need a strategy that works for us and our business to attract those dream clients and turn them into followers and eventually paying clients that become really loyal for their business. So there's four steps to your dream client buying journey. Knowing your ideal client is step number one. So it's attracting those dream clients and getting them to come into your business and purchase with you or or make a booking at your salon. So ideal client, we need to understand who that is so we can market to them more effectively through our social media. Area of expertise, owning your area of expertise 
We want to be an expert for the services that we and the client buying journey, understanding how to talk to that client buying journey, because it is a process that your clients will go through right before they actually make the decision to purchase with you. We need to understand how this actually works, how people actually process and decide to actually make a booking with us before they'll actually become a client at our salon and your content. So having that strategic content that we've kind of talked about, the content planner. So actually having a plan and a system that makes this process super easy and quick so that it doesn't feel overwhelming, it doesn't feel like it's taking so much time and that you'll always know what to post and how to get there quickly. So these are the key four steps that come together and work together to create your dream client buying journey. So the first one we're going to dive into is knowing your ideal client and why this is so important when it comes to your social media marketing. So surprisingly, or maybe unsurprisingly, a lot of people don't actually speak to their ideal client when it comes to social media or when they're talking about their services. And because of that, they're actually missing out on a lot of opportunities to grow their salon and bring in that extra revenue into your salon business. So it's so important that we understand our ideal client and we are so clear, crystal clear on this that we can ensure that our marketing is speaking directly to them. We might currently feel like we have really low engagement on, when it comes to our social media, right? So we're posting and we're trying all these things, but our engagement is still low. No one is liking our posts. No one's leaving us any comments. No one's saving it. No one's sharing it. And that can feel a little bit de deflating. And it feels a little bit like a guessing game because the content's obviously not connecting to the audience that we're wanting to attract. And maybe we're finding that our existing clients are engaging with the content, but that's not actually the goal that we're aiming for, right? We're wanting to attract new clients to bring extra revenue into the salon, but it's just not happening. And we're seeing this constant low engagement when it comes to our social media marketing. And maybe we're attracting the wrong type of clients. So maybe you're actually a hair salon that specializes in blondes, or maybe you're a curly hair hair salon but you're actually getting mums that are bringing in their kids for cuts and you're kind of thinking, what's happening? Why? This is not the kind of client that I'm wanting in my salon. So instead of, and your posts are speaking to everyone. So it's really important that we need to be crystal clear on who our ideal client is and know everything about them so that we can speak directly to them in our social media marketing. So currently maybe we're thinking our posts are speaking to everyone but we really need to be really specific and refined and making sure that we're speaking to that ideal client. It might not be the client that we're serving now in the salon, but it's the dream client that we're wanting to. We need to start making content that speaks to that person. So basically, we're going to cover what is an ideal client. An ideal client is someone that your services solve a problem for. And it's the client that you're wanting to attract into your salon. So again, it might not be the client that you're getting now, but it's that dream client that you're wanting to come into your salon. And it's a persona that we have specific demographics for. So we want to keep this really specific. We're not talking about a broad group here. So when we look at specific demographics, we might start defining our ideal client as a young female that lives in Sydney and they're currently studying. But you need to be getting down to that next level and being more specific with it, right? So think of the difference between this. So it's a 20-year-old university student studying a communications degree while working 15 hours a week in retail at David Jones. She lives with two of her university colleagues in a three-bedroom apartment loaded, located in Coogee Beach, one of Sydney's affluent eastern suburbs. So you can immediately see how much more specific that is, right, than just a young female that's studying and living in Sydney. So we need to ensure that we're building those specific demographics so that we can really understand and develop what our ideal client is. And it's the person you target with your marketing. So an ideal client is who you're wanting to speak to when it comes to your marketing. And this ideal client will become a loyal client that continues to purchase from you. So it's the client that you're wanting to, to come into the salon to become loyal and rebook and spend more and more with us. So we need to know what their dreams and desires are in order to get the most customer life value out of them. To be effective at our salon's marketing, we need to know who we're talking to. Otherwise, how will we even know how to market to them, right? If we don't have any idea of who we're going to target, we don't even know how to talk to them, how to sell to them, how to market to them, how to create content for them. So if you're speaking to everyone, you're really speaking to no one. And you may have heard this saying before when it comes to marketing, but when your personas are crystal clear, you know exactly what to post because you're creating posts specifically for your ideal client. So you know their desires and that determines your content. 
not only will you know what to create, but you'll also have a better understanding of what kind of messages to talk about. And it's a persona that we have specific demographics for. So we want to keep this really specific. For example, someone who's interested in skin and bettering their skin, a 30 plus female who wants to have younger, clearer skin. Usually she's time poor and doesn't put herself first. She's lived on the coast and often deals with sun exposure through summer and dryness in winter from spending time outdoors. She's now noticing the signs of aging and environmental skin damage. I love love that. So So specific. specific. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Amazing. I guess when you really get to know your ideal client a little bit more, you understand where they spend their time. And this relates back to your content. So if your client is spending time um, doing certain things throughout the day, you know that if you're posting them, then they may not be able to see it. So it's really understanding that ideal client will help you figure out when is a good time to post when it comes to your social media marketing. And it's making you the expert, right? You're the solution. You're the solution to that ideal client's problem. So it's important that you know your ideal client and you completely understand them so that you can speak to their pains and your salon service can be the solution for them. Maybe you are scared of narrowing down to one specific client and, you know, just really speaking to one person. If that's you, then hopefully we can help you out today. All right. So this is why we need to think about ideal client, right? Because we're wanting to create content that resonates with that dream client. So when we're posting for everyone, there's really no clear message in terms of our social media marketing. We're not using any specific tone of voice. We're not using the language that our ideal client's using. And therefore, we're not seeing that engagement when it comes to our content because our content is not resonating with our ideal client. And maybe we're attracting the wrong type of clients. And then the quality of our posts drops down. We have low quality posts because we're really not targeting that content to that specific ideal client client and therefore we're not getting any sales or bookings into the salon our revenue is not increasing because we're not speaking to our ideal client but when you start posting for your dream client your content becomes super clear right it's crystal clear you know what you need to write you know who you're speaking to and you're speaking their language using the words that they would use you're calling them out in your content and it becomes really clear and then your content really starts to resonate with them so they feel like oh my gosh this salon totally gets me they're talking directly to me and they can solve all my problems so you start attracting those clients into your business and your quality of content is high you've got this really great content because you've got that direction in terms of who you're speaking to and therefore you're converting more of those people and it's bringing you that extra revenue into the salon business so I wanted to take this as an example so if we've got two clients we've got the 18 year old student she's studying at university and we've got 37 year old mom with two kids under five. So they're in totally different phases of their life and content that you're sharing for the 18 year old is not going to resonate for the 30 year old mom, 37 year old mom that's busy running around with kids. So maybe you'll find that your peak time of posting around 6 PM works for the 18 year old because they are, you know, got home, home from studying, they're chilling on the couch, they're having dinner on the couch, watching Netflix or whatever. So that's a great time to post because they're scrolling on the phone where the mum, she's not looking at her phone at all, right? She's busy doing the dinner, the bath, the bedtime routine. So she's not going to be on her phone until 8.30 p.m. at night. So you know that that's the time that you need to be posting because of what they're doing in their daily life. So the language, the times that we post and everything needs to be different. That's why it's so important to um, get a clear understanding of your ideal client and how you can speak to them. And I wanted to give you an example of what that looks like in actually content creation when it comes to an actual social media post. So you have a post made targeting that 18 year old, right? Maybe they have a low self-confidence. They're really wanting to get more confidence and look their best. You know, they want to be having the trendy clothes and the beautiful hair. And then maybe we're showcasing a product, which is a dry shampoo, which is a perfect kind of quick fix product for a time poor mom. And we're talking about how they can use this in their life and we're really calling them out. We actually say in the caption, ah, dry shampoo, every busy mum's lifesaver, you know. So we're actually calling out our ideal client and being specific when it comes to our content so that when our client's reading this, they're like, oh, yes, totally get this salon, totally gets me. So you can see how understanding your ideal client flows down into your content to determine what to post and what problems you help solve for your audience and able to get that engagement and that cut through when it comes to your content. Yeah, I think the thing to remember is 
when you're speaking to everybody, your message is unclear because you're not speaking about any one specific or particular problem, or you're speaking about all of the problems and all of the ways that you can solve multiple, and so your message is diluted, and thus there is no message. Hey, are you loving this episode so far? Oh, by the way, it's Greta here, Salon Mastery Success Coach at Salon Owners Collective. So I wanted to pop in and ask you something. Do you ever feel like you are winging it when it comes to your business? You started your own business so that you could live the life you wanted with freedom that you wanted, earn great money and be a leader. But the reality is the amount of effort you're putting in isn't giving you an equal reward. You're exhausted and you don't know what to do about it. No matter what you do, you just can't seem to get ahead. You see other people winning and seeing success, but how come it doesn't work for you? You wish you had a clear laid out plan, something to guide you in the right direction or help you with what to do next. What can you do that actually work? In reality, many salon owners feel this way. You aren't alone. If you are nodding your head as you listen to this, then you need the Salon Mastery proven nine part plan to grow your salon. That's right. No more winging it. The Salon Mastery nine part plan has given hundreds of salon owners a plan to grow, build a rockstar team, attract dream clients and become a salon CEO. Our plan will work for you too. To uncover the nine part proven plan, just click the apply now link in the show notes of this episode. Okay, now back to the episode. For the team members, my challenge with that is that your business is now reliant upon the individual team member. And when said team member goes, now you have a gap in your business that you're an expert in this, but they've got nobody to serve that type of service. And your message becomes distributed because people from the outside, they don't see everything that you post. They're going to just see bits and bobs and they're going to go, uh, they're a curly expert one day and, and now they're a straightening expert. Plus they do precision cutting. I'm really confused about who this business is. And when people, when you're confused, you lose. Nobody takes action in confusion. And it's only people take action in clarity. So the clearer you are, and the more that you double down on one message, one message, one message, it's repetition that gets through and I guess creates a catalog of a story, right? That's why when you're watching a, your favorite soap, you're seeing the same freaking ad every time on the ads because it's repetition, repetition, repetition. And finally, you know that that brand does that. People are not logging in their brains every time they see your, a different message that you can do all of the things that, yeah. So you need some repetition and you need some clarity. And I know the fear often is, but if I just say that we've got it curly, what about all my straight hair clients? Well, what I say when, when it comes to that is when people see that you're an expert at something and that you know what they're talking about, this is the kind of conversation that they have in their head, whether they think it logically or kind of in their back brain. Well, if they can do that, then they can probably do that as well. If they can look after her and they're clearly experts, probably they can look after me, me too because it's establishing expertise, which is more important than establishing the fact that you're curly. Well, curly is probably an exceptional one or that you're an expert in precision cutting. You guys are experts. So they're obviously experts. I'll go to them. So anyway, that's my long story for a short question. Do you think I answered it? Did that, did that solve the problem? <laughs> Yeah, you answered that amazingly. A follow-up question. Do you mean keeping each post specific, but still do one per expert? I think it's about keeping one clear expertise for the brand as a whole, rather than kind of keeping each post specific, but posting about lots of different areas of expertise. The brand should have one clear and cohesive brand message in terms of who they serve and what they are experts in. The the shift that I want you to have is it's not about you promoting your team. It's about you promoting your brand. Forget the team. You can do some nice behind the scenes, them doing the stuff. As a brand, what are the one, two, and at a stretch, three things that you're really going to narrow, you know, focus down on. And once you capture people that know that you do injectables, like what is the hero thing that you're going to pin your brand on? And once you know what those are, so let's just choose skin for a moment. If the yeah. majority of your content focuses all around skin, if that's the business that you want to grow the most, uh -huh. then the other things, they don't have to be ignored, but they're kind of secondary. You want to stand for something. 
And once you've got people coming into the business, then they can learn about all of the other services that you do. Mm. Is, that, is that helpful? So one, it's not about the team. Two, people will learn about the other stuff. You just need something to capture their attention. And so focus is everything. So we kind of tipped over into area of expertise here as well, which is one of the other steps we need to take when it comes to that dream client journey is really owning that niche. So just going back to what Rhys was saying there, having those key hero services, what it really does is it establishes that loyal customer base and really has you that solid area of expertise that helps ensure that those specific customers that you want, that will want to buy from your business instead of your competition, because it really allows you to stand out from the crowd and it allows them, your audience, to identify your product and brand and know that your offer solves their problem, right? So currently we might think, but I need to talk about everything. I've got, you know, you've got all these great services and you feel like maybe you need to talk about all of these services. And if you don't, you'll be missing out on revenue. So this is like a really big pain when it comes to thinking about our social media content, right? You just feel like, oh my gosh, I just need to talk about everything. Everything we do is amazing. I just need to tell everyone because then it's going to sell more. And the flip side to that is that you feel like you're always posting the same thing. If I focus on one thing or one service, then I feel like I'm being too repetitive, right? And everyone's going to get bored of my content because you're focusing too much on one thing. And you might think talking about everything will sell more. I've got to talk about everything because this is going to drive extra revenue. If everyone knows all these services that I'm doing amazing, they're going to want to buy everything. But that's actually not the case. Talking about and owning those key services that align with your area of expertise is what will actually convert them when it comes to your social media content. So let's talk a little bit about just to cover off what is an area of expertise, right? So it's a specialized segment within the market. So you may work in the market of hair or you may work in the market of beauty, but we're wanting to really hone down into that specialized segment within that market. Also known as a niche, just kind of means the same thing. And this is where your hero services come in because your hero services is what's going to appeal to that smaller segment, that dream client that you're wanting to get into the salon business. And it's based on the subject that you know a lot about. So you as a salon owner and your team, you know about this subject, you're an expert in it, you can really own that. So that's what your area expertise is all about. So you need to be a specialist and not a generalist when it comes to your social media marketing. So I like to give this analogy. Basically, I'm a runner, right? I love to run every morning. I'm not actually a runner. This is just a story. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> but I... I run every morning, right? I run kilometers and kilometers and it's just something that I love doing. It's part of my DNA basically. And one day I'm running and I fall over and I really hurt my knee. So I can't run anymore and I'm so sad about it. So I start Googling, right? How can I fix my knee? It's so painful. I need to get this fixed so I can, you know, continue to run and do what I love every day. So I start Googling and I find this GP, you know, he looks like a great guy. He's got pretty good reviews online and he does, he can help with all sorts of things and he's, he looks pretty good. But then I come across this lady and she's a knee specialist and she only does knees. She's been doing knees for the last 15 years. It's what she specializes in and I need my knee fix. So who do you think that I'm going to book in with, right? Pop it in the chat. Who do you think I'm going to book in with? The knee specialist or the GP? And this is why being the authority in a certain area of service gives you the edge over your competition. It's the reason that you're going to stand out. Your content also becomes cleaner. Your message is so clear and your hero services become basically your content themes. And then when it comes to planning your content, it actually saves you time because you kind of already know, right, this is like the, the two themes or the three themes that I need to talk about when it terms to comes to my social media marketing. So it saves you so much time because you're not looking at all your services and thinking, oh God, where do I even start? And it's not this overwhelming thought. And in addition to that, it also turns your followers into customers because you're owning that area of expertise. You are the best solution to their problem. Your services are the best solution to their problem. And they're going to book with you over the competition because you're really owning that. So again, we've got generalist versus specialist, right? So when you're a generalist, just like the GP, you're just okay at everything. You kind of help with everything. You can do it all. But then your content can be confusing because you're trying to post about everything as well and you're not really owning anything specific. Therefore, you're not getting the engagement, you're attracting the wrong clients and you're, you're not looking like an expert in the market. You're not looking like you're amazing. 
and therefore you're not driving that conversion. People aren't wanting to book with you because you're not standing out from the crowd and you're just the same as everybody else. But when you are a specialist and you own your niche and you own your area of expertise, you're the best. You are the best at your hero services. There's no one else that compares. Your content is super clear. It's resonating with your audience. You're attracting those dream clients and you have the authority, right? You're the authority over everyone else. You stand out from the crowd and therefore it's going to convert and it's going to bring more revenue into the salon. So when you have a look at your salon's Instagram page, you should immediately see what your area of expertise is. So I'd love you, if you've got your phone next to you, I'm sure you all do, to have a look at your salon's Instagram page. What does your salon's Instagram profile look like? Does your content and bio show your area of expertise? You should really know in like two seconds when you come to someone's page what their area of expertise is. Because if you've got to put yourself in your ideal client's mind, right? That if they're coming to your Instagram profile and they're looking for a new salon, whether that's beauty or hair in their area, they're looking for someone who's specializing. So you've really got to show that that's immediately clear when they come to your Instagram profile. Social media is so quick. You've got to to capture that attention. So it's really about what sets you apart and going narrow and deep. So don't be scared to be specific when it comes to your area of expertise. Talk about the topics that you actually know stuff about um, and talk about the services that you're wanting to attract more clients for. So you don't want to be confusing with your messaging. You want to be really consistent and clear so that you convert. And it's like a runway collection. So Braley, what do you think of this one here? Yeah, I think just like you said, I like to think of it like our social media accounts are like a runway collection. And I don't know if any of you guys have watched Project Runway or one of those types of shows, but they always say, you know, it needs to be cohesive. They need to all go together. And I think the same goes for our social media content. Like it needs to be cohesive. There needs to be one clear, consistent and cohesive brand look. You know, you can keep your brand message clear and consistent and you could talk about the same things over and over again without being repetitive because it can be different, but still kind of all go together. So I think that's important to remember when we're posting on socials to really communicate that clear brand message. So just to recap, knowing your ideal client. So I think everyone understands how important this is, but just remember that we need to be specific, right? You need to hone down and get really specific on who your ideal client is. Because again, if you're speaking to everyone, you're speaking to no one. We want the clients, like Larissa said, when they're sitting in the chair, we want them to be like, oh, you just totally understand me and you're talking directly to me. Owning your area of expertise. So again, another thing, element that pulls this all together is really being the expert. So this is going to be what helps you stand out from your competitors and really make you the best at what you do, the best at your services that you offer in your salon. Ah, don't you just love to hate a cliffhanger? Belle and Braley will be back on the podcast next week to pick up where they left off. But until then, I feel like they've given us a lot of things to work on. We now know how to identify our ideal client and how to communicate with them on socials, the right message in the right way at the right time. And it is particularly important that we refine our communication strategy our content strategy to speak directly to our unique customer for our business by being as specific as possible. Remember that if you're speaking to everyone, you're actually speaking to no one. No one is listening. And if you think you might need some help with marketing in your business, well, reach out. I'd love to chat. Maybe Salon Mastery or even the Momentum Program is a good fit to you. Otherwise, tune in same time, same place next week. Ciao for now. <laughs>